hello friends welcome to my channel i am back again my name is wolo and i want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel in as much as i love to share information about immigrating to canada i also love to share information about life in canada and today is a video about life in canada and i pledge to say the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help me ja <laughs> Please forgive me for being dramatic in this video, but I have to tell you the truth about life in Canada and that is life in Canada is very expensive. Yes, and let me put on my cap. So this is the um, 12 days of Christmas series I promised I said I would do and today is the second day, 11 days to Christmas and I think about 16 days or 17 days to the end of the year. I don't know the calculation, but we are already rounding up 2019 and um yes yeah, so today's video is about life in canada and how expensive canada is it might be interesting for you to note that canada is more expensive than the united states in certain um aspects but canada is cheaper in terms of medical care for their citizens compared to the united states for us you pay out of your pocket for your medical bills or if you are working in a company that has um, health insurance then you can get free medical but for canada we have universal health care insurance and so health care is free that's it but apart from that canada is expensive and um different provinces have their different provincial sales tax and um hst um, and based on that whatever you buy you pay taxes on it and of course these taxes are actually used to you know fund all these things that we have for free it funds the healthcare system it funds the educational system it funds a lot of social welfare programs that the government has put in place for its residents and its citizens it also funds the canada child benefits which people with children get every month so when people work and um, they deduct these taxes from their earnings and then you see your paycheck at the end of the day don't complain that um, we are paying so much taxes because of course it is used to fund all these programs that we have and you still get something for those who have children they still get something those who don't have children they also get something especially if they are earning below a level of income because canada is expensive there are actually options for every person it's just dependent on you and your kind of lifestyle that you want to live there are some people who are very rich they just want to come to canada as an option an alternative to their home country and become a dual citizen just you know just that option so they come and just live the life they don't bother whereas there are people who come to canada and you know try to manage themselves and you know work hard so that they can have enough savings and have enough money to afford the kind of lifestyle that they want to live so everything is basically about lifestyle if you fall into the category of a rich person of course you can afford anything without thinking twice when you're spending your money but if you fall into the category of someone who has to manage himself count the bills look at the bills and all that then you you have to look for options and this video is to talk about the options that are available when it comes to living in canada so that you don't find it too expensive but of course it is you that will decide on the option if it is suitable for you or if you want to strive more or work more or you know some people actually work two jobs three jobs just to pay the bills and all that if you want to fall into that group of people then it's your choice but what i believe is canada is actually um affordable in certain ways and also expensive in certain aspects and in explaining that or in buttressing that point um if you actually want to land in toronto or ontario this is for new immigrants planning to come to canada and thinking of which province to land in if your plan is to land in ontario if you want to rent a house it is better to rent outside the gta area rent in surrounding communities where you have to take one hour transit or walk one hour train or drive one hour 
to your workplace if your workplace is in downtown Toronto. So if you're living outskirts, it's much cheaper to rent compared to when you're living in the GTA area. In the GTA area, you spend as much as $3,000, $4,000 on rent alone. But if you live outside the GTA area, you spend less than that. And of course, you ask yourself, how much is your earning? How much are you earning? Then you also have the option of renting a basement. If you don't mind living in a basement, that is the bottom of somebody's apartment. If you don't mind living in a basement, basement um, rentals are quite cheaper. That's also an option. But if you don't want to live in Ontario and you just want to live in an affordable city, there are so many affordable cities in Canada. Um, Winnipeg is one of them. Saskatoon is the second one. Regina in Saskatchewan is also an affordable city. Edmonton, Calgary, they are affordable cities. These cities are affordable in terms of rentals, uh, not as expensive as Ontario. Um, and, and when I talk about Ontario, I mean Toronto. It's not as expensive as Toronto and Vancouver in British Columbia. So these are the options to expensive cities in Canada. Then another aspect that is also very expensive in Canada is the childcare. Childcare is expensive, very, very expensive. And people with children are paying so much money to put their children in childcare. And in most cases, for new immigrants, one family member has to stay at home to take care of the children while the other family member is working. And that person is paying the bills. At the end of the day, they don't have enough money in their pocket. But that is the reality on ground and you just have to work your way around it. For if both husband and wife want to actually work so that they can pay the bills, that means they have to um, do shift jobs if they want to avoid um, paying um, daycare centers, especially if the children are below two years. If they want to avoid that, they can work in shift. Maybe the husband or the wife goes to work during the day and comes back to take care of the child and the, the husband goes to work in the evening, comes back midnight. And that's how, you know, people, families in Canada manage or the wife stays at home and takes care of the child while the husband is working and he's the one taking care of the bills. Um, if you don't want that option, you just want to put your child in a daycare, just know that daycare is expensive. In Ontario, you'll be paying as much as $1,500, $2,000 for a child per, for, for daycare per month. Um, in Winnipeg, Winnipeg or Manitoba, we have um, subsidized daycare. The cheapest um, province or the province that has the cheapest daycare is actually um, Quebec. Quebec has the cheapest daycare in Canada and um, it's highly subsidized by the, for, by the government for them, followed by Manitoba. Manitoba is the second province that has um, the second cheapest daycare. So people spend money and, on daycare and it's very expensive. You can be spending as much as $500, $600 on daycare if your child will be attending daycare. So that's why Canada, people complain that Canada is expensive because by the time you receive your salary, and you're already paying rent about 1,500 Canadian dollars. You're paying daycare for your child. That is if your child is not of school age, you're paying daycare for your child. I mean, how much do you now have left? You know, so these are the reasons why people say Canada is very expensive. And I am telling you the truth because I want you to be very, very realistic when you plan to immigrate to Canada. Then another expense that people spend money on and people find very expensive in Canada is, um, having a vehicle or transportation transportation is expensive if you have a car because car insurance is very expensive and the option to um not having a car is taking a bus that means you have to live in a city and also live in an area where um is close to the bus stops so for new immigrants this is a tip if you're coming to Canada as a new immigrant, it is very good you rent close to the bus stop, especially during winters because uh, the winters are very brutal. For people like me living in Manitoba, the winters are very, very brutal and you just have to look for an apartment that is close to the bus stop so that you don't have to walk too much distance to a bus stop. 
and you take a bus so the alternative to getting a car is actually um taking the bus you don't if you, if you get a car you'll be buying gas you'll be maintaining the car and to maintain the car you change your oil you're spending about hundred dollars to change your oil even to you know if you want to hire a mechanic to fix your car it's very expensive so even the insurance itself you're spending as much as 150 dollars 200 dollars 300 dollars on insurance alone you know add that one to your rent add that to your child care expense add that to other bills i mean it's very expensive so the alternative option to actually um getting a car is taking a bus or if you don't mind the weather you can buy a bicycle people actually ride bicycles during winter yes in manitoba people ride bicycles there are there are people who even um trek during winter they don't mind the cold they just wear all the layers and you know they are on their way they don't mind the cold but of course you can't live without a car the way the transport system is in canada you just need a car you actually need a car to move around but if you feel you want to save money and conserve money you want to do away with um maintaining a car paying for parking um paying for insurance then the best thing is to just you know get a bus pass and you are free you're good to go the bus pass is hundred dollars whereas maintaining a car is more expensive so that's one expense that people can't avoid or if you want to avoid it it's good another major expense that um makes canada expensive is the telephone bills telephone is too expensive compared to other countries i don't understand why um, paying for data is so expensive you know when you buy data or you have internet in your house you're paying too much for internet you're paying so much for data on your phone but people have actually found an alternative to this and the alternative is to go for cheaper and unpopular um, telephone service providers and internet service providers and also try to limit their data usage so um, instead of using the big five telephone service providers or the big four i can't tell if it's big five or big four telos rogers bell mts um i can't remember which one again instead of using these ones people go for cheaper um cheaper mobile options cheaper telephone services like chat and public mobile um kudo and fido these ones are cheaper alternatives they are cheaper options compared to the big telephone service providers alternatively you can go without data on your phone and maybe do a pay as you go telephone service where you just pay and then if you want to make a call you make a call if you don't want to make a call you're not charged for making a call instead of signing a two years contract with these telephone service providers where you are forced to pay um about 100 to 115 dollars every month on telephone services alone telephone services and data services alone whether you make a call you don't make any call whether you're using your data or not you're paying as much as 100 dollars or 115 dollars for telephone services another expense that makes canada very expensive is um utility bills and utility bills you can't do away with them canada is cold and you know you have to heat your house so in heating your house you're spending so much money on electricity and when you're spending so much money on electricity you can't say because um you want to conserve money you will not put on your heater of course you will freeze if you don't want to put on your heater that means you have to wear like 10 sweaters 15 sweaters 20 sweaters to stay warm and all that but of course you can't avoid it this expense you can't avoid it. you just have to put on your heater and when the bill comes you just have to pay it so um, there are alternative options though and the alternative option to heating which i have found is for people especially for people who live outskirts so people who prefer to live in the rural area they buy wood so they use wood they have a fireplace where they um buy wood during the winter which is very cheap you can buy a wood log for like 20 dollars and then use the wood 
put it in the fireplace to heat your house during winter which is a cheaper option to the electric heating or the gas heating when it comes to buying furnitures there are cheaper options to buying furnitures and um, in one of my videos i talked about kijiji i also mentioned places where you can get items for free if you don't want to spend your money and people also do thrifting and you can go to salvation army um goodwill restore to buy items at a discount instead of buying uh, new items if you want to buy a new item you can use the shop top 5 app to compare the prices to know which one is affordable for you and then you have some savings when you use that app if you don't want to buy anything new then you go for thrifting you go to the thrift stores to buy secondhand items but you have to be very careful when you're buying those secondhand items although in most cases um, you have lots of warehouse or all these bigger stores that actually sell to these places at uh, discounted prices and then these thrift stores also sell to the public at cheaper prices so you can actually walk into a salvation army store or a valley village store and you find a new item that has never been used at a cheaper price compared to when you go to walmart to buy the same item so um what i'm trying to say is that there are alternatives there are options and it is best to seek out those options and alternatives to live in so that you can have some savings in your pocket i know it is not easy for new immigrants most people most new immigrants do not find it easy when it comes to all these expenses that is why people complain that um, the bills are too much one can actually afford certain things and live within their means without you know um falling into debt and when i'm talking about debt i think i have to do a separate video about credit card the banking system and debt in general i'll do it in a separate video but today's video is just about um canada being expensive and the options there are options available and it is best for new immigrants to seek out these options so that you can live within your means and not um, plunge yourself into debt and not complain about Canada being too expensive. So this is the information I want to share today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing the videos and for subscribing and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.